Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be going over some basic math for welders. We're going to be talking about units of measure, but you know, inches and feet in particular. And we're going to be specifically covering how to go from fractions of an inch to a decimal format, and then from a decimal format back into a fraction. So let me start off with three well-known fractions. These are commonly used in the industry. They are one quarter or one fourth, one half, and three quarters or three fourths. Now our goal is to take these fractions and convert them into an equivalent decimal format. Now, if you've been in the industry for a while, common knowledge is already going to tell you that one quarter is equal to 0 0.25 or just 0 0.25. One half is equal to 0 0.5 and three-fourths is equal to 0.75. But how do we get here, and how do we know that these answers are absolute? And this is where we're going to need to do a little bit of math. Think of fractions as another way of telling us a division problem. So in the case of one-fourth, we can rewrite that as one divided by four. With one-half, we can rewrite this as one divided by two. And with three-fourths, we can write this as three divided by four. So let's go ahead and let's start fresh with one-fourth. And remember, I said that this is the equivalent of one divided by four. So let's go ahead and turn that into a division problem. Now, four can't go into one, no matter what we do. So what do we do from here? This is where we start to convert the answer into a decimal point. So four can't go into one, but if we add a decimal point after the one and then throw in a couple of zeros as placeholders, what we're going to do is we're automatically going to write down the decimal point in the answer directly above the decimal point in the number being divided. This is a good organizational skill to utilize instead of adding the decimal after the math has already been done and potentially putting it in the wrong spot. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. Let's write 1.00 divided by 4. Now, 4, again, doesn't go into 1. But if we skip over that decimal point and we say, can 4 go into 10? Yes, it can. This is where the decimal comes into play. We need to make sure that the decimal point is in the right location in the spot where our answer is going to go. And we just continue the division problem as normal. So 4 goes into 10 twice. We're going to multiply 2 by 4, and that's going to give us 8. And then we subtract 8 from 10, and this is going to give us a remainder of 2. Now we drop down that second 0, so that way it gives us 20. Now, does 4 go into 20? Yes, it does. It goes into 20 five times. Now, we're going to multiply 5 by 4, and that's going to give us 20. So we subtract 20 from 20, this gives us 0, and so we can't continue any further in this problem. And so that is how we know that 1 divided by 4, or 1 fourth, is the equivalent of 0 0.25. And you can use the same process for 1 half and 3 quarters, just to verify that they do equal 0 0.5 and 0 0.75 when converted from fraction to a decimal. Now for this example, I'm going to skip to an entirely different number. I'm going to be doing 3 eighths. And from my experience in fabrication and welding, I can tell you right off the bat that 3 eighths when converted to a decimal is 0 0.375 or just 0 0.375. But how do we make sure that this is true? Now, we're going to start by converting the fraction of 3 eighths into a division problem. So remember, 3 eighths is the same as saying 3 divided by 8. We know that 8 doesn't go into 3. So we need to add a decimal point directly after the 3, and then add a couple zeros that are going to help us with math later on. Now, in the answer portion of the division problem, we need to ensure that we place the decimal point directly above the decimal point that appears in the number 3.00. So 8 won't go into 3, but it will go into 30, and it'll go into 30 three times. Now, we know this because when you multiply 8 by 3, you get 24. So then we're going to subtract 24 
from 30, and that's going to give us 6. Now, after we get 6, we need to bring down the second 0, so that way that 6 becomes a 60. Because 8 will not go into 6, but it will go into 60. And it'll go into 60 7 times. So then we're going to throw 7 in the answer portion right after the number 3. And then we're going to multiply 8 by 7, which is going to give us 56. And then we subtract 56 from 60, and that's going to give us 4. Now, we're a little stuck. In order to continue, we have to add a third 0 in the 3.00 to make it 3.000. And once we do that, we're going to drop that 0 down to make the 4 a 40. And then 8 goes into 40 five times, and 8 times 5 is 40. So when we subtract 40 from 40, it gives us 0. We're evened out. And at this point, we can't go any further into the problem, so that means our answer is 0 0.375 or 0.375. And now we're going to do quite the opposite. We're going to take a decimal that's given to us as part of an inch, and we're going to convert it back into a fraction. So just like when we were talking about converting fractions into a decimal, I gave you three basic fractions that are often used in industry, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to give you three decimals that are often used, 0.25, 0 0.50, and 0.75. Now, anyone with a little bit of experience in the industry will be able to tell you right off the top of their head that 0.25 is the same as saying 1 fourth, 0 0.50, or just simply saying 0 0.5 is the same as 1 half, and 0.75 is the same as saying 3 quarters. But again, how do we know that this is in fact true? Well, let's start with 0.25 for our first example. Now, we know that we need to convert it to a fraction, which is just another form of a division problem. And now, because we're dealing with decimals, we know that anything to the right of the decimal is going to be something measured in tenths, hundreds, or even thousandths. And if we think back to the basic elements of, uh, of a fraction, the bottom number, the denominator, is how many whole pieces uh, we need in order to create one, that is one whole. And the number on top, or the numerator, is actually how many pieces we have. So when we convert 0.25 into a fraction, our denominator needs to be something larger than that decimal number. We're gonna be, de we're gonna be using a number that represents tenths, hundreds, or thousands. And so there's a couple different ways to figure this out. One is just simply to take 0 0.25. Now, the two is in the tenth spot. The five is in the hundredth spot. So this tells us that the number that is going to be in our denominator is not 10. It's not one, but it's 100. Because 25 or 0.25 is telling us that we have 25 hundredths of a whole. So again, our denominator needs to be 100. Another way of figuring this out is to again take 0 0.25 or just 0 0.25 and move the decimal point completely to the right of the number and then count how many times or how many positions you're skipping over in order to get that decimal completely to the right. So in this case, we're having to skip over two positions or two spots uh, those being the tenths and the hundred spot. And this is going to tell us that um, we need to have two zeros behind the number one uh, to give us our denominator. So again, going back to our denominator being 100. So this is going to give us a fraction of 25 over 100 or 25 one hundredths. However, there is one problem with this fraction. It's an improper fraction meaning it can be simplified, and that's what we need to do. We need to simplify this fraction down to its most basic form. 
And in order to simplify it, we need to think of a number that divides into both the numerator and the denominator equally. A good number to start with is 5. So we divide both the top number and the bottom number by 5, and that simplifies it down to 5 over 20, or 5 twentieths. But this is still an improper fraction. It can be simplified even further. The number 5 can go uh, into both the numerator and the denominator equally. So if we take out 5, this leaves us with 1 over 4, or 1 fourths, or 1 quarter, however you want to say it. And at this point, the fraction cannot be simplified any further, and this is how we know that the answer is 1 fourth. Alright, so let's try a different example. Let's go with 0 0.125, or just simply 0.125. Now, at the top of my head, I can tell you that this is equal to 1 eighth. But, how do we know that for sure? Let's just go ahead and walk through all the steps, just to double check. So when converting 0.125 to a fraction, let's, let's go ahead and take it from the first, uh, the first method. So we can go ahead and check to see how many digits come after the decimal. In this, in this case, there are three. We see the one is in the tenth spot, the two is in the hundredth spot, and the five is in the thousandth spot. So this is one indicator that's going to tell us that this is going to be 125 over 1,000. If we go with the second method, all we have to do is move the decimal completely to the right and count how many positions we have to skip over in order to get there. So in this case, we're skipping over three positions, so that's going to tell us that there's going to be a 1 with three zeros behind it, or 1,000. Again, leading us to the same conclusion that the fraction is going to be 125 over 1,000. Now, of course, this isn't going to be our final answer, since this is technically an improper fraction. We need to simplify this down even further. So let's rewrite that. 125 over 1,000. Now, what's a good number that can divide into both of them? The numerator and the denominator. Let's go with 25. So 25 goes into 125, and it also goes into 1,000. So if we divide out 25, what are we left with? We're basically left with 5 over 40. Now, granted this is a simplified version, it's still not as simple as we can get. We can still pull some numbers out of here. So, what's another good number? Let's say, let's say 5. 5 obviously goes into 5, and it also goes into 40. So let's go ahead and divide out 5. And that leaves us with 1 eighth. Now, if we take 1 eighth and we go ahead and just rewrite this so it looks a little bit cleaner, this is as far as we can take it. We cannot simplify this any further, so this is pretty much our answer, and that's how we get from 0.125 to 1 eighth.